Pages are worn thin from decades of fingers tracing their edges. Intricate designs faded away from years of handling. A tear in one corner, a smear of blood across another. And we've also got brick dust. So did she kill her husband and bury him in the cellar? Because every book tells a story, doesn't it? Blood and brick dust together. Shelves upon shelves of rare books fill this tiny shop in Sydney, the sanctuary for Paul Tronson, a traditional bookbinder who's been working in the field for 38 years. I wanted to get into printing, uh, which I did, but I had a choice of what kind of printing I wanted to do, letterpress, litho, or whatever, plate making, uh, you know, compository. And it was thrown at me, print finishing and bookbinding, and I just thought the bookbinding sounded more interesting. He did his training and apprenticeship in England, living and working there until seven years ago when he relocated his business to Vancouver Island. But he says it hasn't affected his clientele. His wait list is still three years long. I was taught there was no two chances. You only get one chance. So there's no room for mistakes. So therefore, you only get one option, and that's to do it right. One thing that sets Paul apart from other bookbinders is he doesn't use any chemicals when he's doing his bookbinding. So for example, this is actually red cherry with cochineal beetle, which is a beetle from South America, and he uses it as a dye in his bookbindings. I use um, oak bark, uh, crushed green walnut shells, fermented black plums, um, red cherries, cochineals, beetroots. The colour he's using for this book comes from plums. It takes around about uh, four months to extract the colour. Uh, through a fermentation process. After applying around five coats of the dye, he seals the colour in with a tallow made from candle wax and bull's fat. But it's not just the binding Paul specialises in, he does full book restoration too. And this will give you an idea on uh, condition and what can be done. So this is missing the first few pages of the, cal the calendar, but, so, but I, I can get those. Paul points out a few issues with this 17th century Bible. Nothing he can't tackle. He's mastered knitting invisible fibers back together, removing stains and even rebuilding text, avoiding chemicals where possible. Chemicals tend to break down the cellulose in the paper, so you get cellular degradation, ultimate disintegration as well. His latest project is restoring full sets of books. He calls them investment libraries, where the return on these books can be as much as 12% annually for the owner. Well, Dickens uh, when he became author of the millennium, uh, his prices uh, went up by 30% overnight when he was, was actually named the author of the millennium. And they've actually spiked again. His first issues and first editions have spiked again since his birthday. So Dickens is an al always a very good investment. As you can see, he's a whiz with book history too. But Paul says passing on his knowledge and skills to an apprentice would take 15 years. So he continues to work alone in his shop using his 70 different styles of bookbinding to bring this trade back as a traditional art form. Reporting in Sydney, I'm Jen Moranitz.